When I started Diablo 4 last year, I made a build called Stormclaw and it was a lot of fun. It was all about extremely fast melee attack speed, as well as on-hit effects. And when I got on Last Epoch to see if I could recreate it, I was disappointed to find out that Tempest Strike didn't have a way to scale attack speed. But as we saw recently, they took that restriction away, so Tempest Strike can actually scale with attack speed extremely well. Now keep in mind, I've never played in the endgame of Last Epoch. This is a purely speculative build based on common sense and fun. I do, however, think that it's going to be extremely good, and I'll take the time to refine it and make sure you guys get an updated copy as soon as I can. But hopefully this can be a good starting point to get you going in the right direction. And I'll be streaming the entire process live on my Twitch stream. So if you want to be there for that, go to twitch.tv slash screamheart. Keep in mind that the only choice with Last Epoch that you get locked into is your subclass. But as long as you chose Shaman, you'll be able to adjust to the changes that come with the build. Shout out to the guys at maxroll.gg for having the most up-to-date build planner. Now let me show you what I have so far. So first up for the skills on the build, I'm going with Tempest Strike and this is going to be the main source of damage in the build. Maybe not directly, but it is the main catalyst. I also put Gathering Storm, Fury Leap, Summon Storm Totem, and Earthquake. So the main concept behind the build is attacking quick and getting on-hit effects. And as you can see in the Tempest Strike tree, we're maxing out our points into Grand Cyclone, and also trying to max out our points in Thunderstorm. These are going to give us increased chances of casting Wind Tempest and Thunder Tempest. And as you can see down on the right, we have Ceaseless Typhoon, which gives us a chance to cast Tornado every time we cast Wind Tempest. Now let me explain why this build can be so insane. So we're using Tempest Strike, which can attack extremely quickly. Tempest Strike has a chance to cast Wind Tempest and Thunder Tempest. Wind Tempest has a chance to summon Tornado. Tornado can summon Storm Bolts. And Tornado also summons Storm Orbs. That if we go to our passive tree, we also have a chance to summon Storm Bolts from casting the Tempest originally. And we also have a 28% chance to summon Boulders from our Avalanche. Now these ones I'm considering whether or not they're worth it to be in the build, but a 30% chance seems pretty solid for something that's attacking so quickly. Keep in mind that all of these are spells. Every single one of these things that we are proccing is a spell. That means we can effectively scale the damage on all of these. Now if we go to our Earthquake, we can see that the Earthquake is also going to be doing lightning damage, but the main reason I'm taking Earthquake is because it's going to give us 6 seconds of haste and frenzy. So as long as we use this every 6 seconds, we're going to have 20% more movement speed and 20% more attack speed. When you combine that with the 20% attack speed we're getting from Warm Shelter, the 16% attack speed we're getting from Ancestral Swiftness, the 100% attack speed we're getting from our two one-handed weapons, the 30% we're getting from our gloves, and other possible attack speed I either forgot about or don't know about yet, we're going to be attacking insanely fast. And this crazy attack speed is going to help us in a lot of other places in the build. For example, Gladiator of Lagan here should be about 80 flat spell damage. Now since I'm relatively new to the game, I want you guys to work with me on this build, so leave some comments below and let me know what you think. For example, Sky Opener. This one can expend the storm stacks when you use Tempest Strike. These storm stacks typically come from Gathering Storm, but I was hoping to find a way to apply storm stacks without having to actually manually cast Gathering Storm. So if there is a way, let me know. Also, if I find a way to get the points or remove them from somewhere else, I'd like to go with Cloudburst Conduit, because one of the things we want to do in this build is always have at least one totem up, and this is just going to double the amount of Thunder Tempest that we're able to cast. For Gathering Storm, I was trying to focus on what could increase the damage of our Storm Bolts the most. I don't think we actually need to have this on our skill bar, but I'll keep it there until I find something that I want there instead. There's a lot of nice options here to help us increase the amount of Storm Bolts that we're dishing out on enemies. We've got Excited Bolts that's increasing our damage based on mana. We've got Two-Eyed Storm, which as long as we find a way to actually get those Storm Stacks outside of casting the spill manually, we're going to be able to get more than one Storm Bolt for every Storm Bolt that we cast. We've got Lightning Strikes twice, which is going to give us a 20% chance to cast an additional Storm Bolt against bosses, and some other nice stuff to help increase their effectiveness. Now my question for you guys that know better about the game, if something says Gathering Storm deals additional spell damage, does this count if we're doing Storm Bolts, or is this only affecting the actual casting of the skill? Because that question is going to determine how I use my points here. For Tornado, we're obviously going into the Lightning damage so we can cast more Storm Bolts. And I also think the Churning Orbs is a good place to invest points. But another nice thing about Tornado is we got Aspect of the Storm. This is going to be increasing our movement speed, it's going to increase our attack speed by another 20% that I didn't mention before, and it's going to give us increased mana regeneration. So not only is this doing damage, but it's also buffing us. And it's basically the same thing for the Storm Totem. Storm Totem, we're not focusing on the damage from the Storm Totem, but we want to always have the Storm Totem up. It's going to give us a lot of passive bonuses. Not only is it giving us the base passive bonus for the Shaman, but it's also increasing Shock Chance. It's giving us a massive amount of move speed. It's going to increase our Lightning Damage. It's going to increase our melee Lightning Damage. And it can create a Lightning Nova when it dies. For the gear, uh, we're focusing on the Spell Damage with Tempest Strike on the Helmet. And for all of our defensive stats, I'm focusing on either Health, Armor, 
or resistances. For the amulet, I went with the imbued ominous. I don't actually know the rarity of this, but it seemed way too good to pass up. So let me know if you guys think this is an accessible item or if there's a better alternative. And for the added stat, I went with the increased spell damage. For both of our one-handers, I went with Deft Tempest Maw. The added stat is increased melee attack speed on both of them. And this just has a lot of nice synergizing stats. Again, if you know a better alternative, let me know. For the chest armor, I went with the Primalist Static Shell. It seemed to synergize pretty well, but there might be better choices. I think that it's entirely possible that some of these uniques will get replaced with normal items, just so it's easier to choose the stats that you want. But the most important thing on the chest piece is the plus four to Tempest Strike. That also comes with a nice increase to spell damage. For the belt, I went with increased lightning damage as the priority stat. And then on both rings, I went with increased spell damage as the priority stat. We've also got increased critical strike chance. And then for the gloves, the priority stat is melee attack speed. We also got increased critical strike chance. And here I have reduced damage from critical strikes. I know that's somewhat important in the game. I just don't know how much yet. So I'm going to hold off on putting too much of that in the build. For the boots, I went with Stormtide. And here we're adding movement speed. This is going to be a massive amount of movement speed on top of the already great movement speed on it. And as far as I know, being shocked doesn't matter too much. And with our relic, I went with the implicit to leech damage as health. And the priority stat I went with here is the critical strike multiplier. And we got some increased critical strike spell chance. For the idols, outside of the chance to cast boulders on hit, I wasn't too sure what I should go with here. So I just kind of stacked armor and health on all the small ones. And I got a little more health and spell damage on this one. I'm pretty confident I can optimize these more, but without more knowledge, I can't say for sure. I'm pretty sure some of these idle slots are going to be used to min-max your resistances, so this won't be one-to-one -one of what you'd see in-game. For the blessings, I think I mostly chose correctly here. I went with Grand Body of Obsidian for the armor, Grand Bulwark of the Tundra for the armor, Grand Mastery of the Masters for the class-specific drop rate, Grand Resolve of Humanity for the all-resist. If you think there's a better choice on this one, let me know because I wasn't 100% sure. Grand Hope of the Beginning for the prefix shard drop rate, Grand Mysteries of the Deep for the 50% chance to shred lightning resistance on hit. Again, I think this is the right choice, but I'm not 100% sure. I went for Grand Scars of Blood for the increased one-handed axe drop rate. I figured we needed two of them, so may as well go for the increased drop rate. I went for Grand Hunger of the Void for the Spell Leech. Grand Vision of the Aurora. I put this one because I was thinking that amulets are small, so they're not going to take up as much space if you get more of them. But also, the amulet in this build seems like a pretty rare amulet, so maybe it's a good choice. But again, let me know if you think there's a better alternative here. And then I did Grand Favor of Souls for the 100% increased ornate idle drop rate. And that's because I wanted the boulder chance on hit. But if you guys think that the boulder chance on hit is not worth it, let me know what you think would be better. Now for my passive skill trees, I think that I'm mostly where I want to be. But definitely let me know if you know better. So in our base primalist tree, the main thing that we need is the Harmony of Blades. Everything else here is just going to be buffs to our damage or our health. And then in the Shaman tree, we've got a lot of buffs to attunement. But we've also got a 25% attack speed while we have a totem out, which is very useful. Then we're putting these points in here just to get to this one, which is Thunderstrike. This is going to be a 50% chance to cast a Storm Bolt every single time that we hit with a melee attack. And considering how fast we're attacking, these should be dropping all the time. And I'm a little sad they changed this one, but Conflicts used to be a 200% damage increase to these Lightning Bolts. But it's still a really good one to have because it's increasing the area for all of our skills, and it's reducing the damage we're taking from Shocked Enemies. In the Druid Tree, I didn't do much, I just put a couple of points here. I felt like these were more effective than dropping points into one attunement somewhere else. But these 10 points could be totally removed if there's something more important elsewhere. In Beastmaster, I really wanted to get Boarheart, and I also liked the Rending Maw. So in order to get there, we got 8 points in Ursine Strength. This is actually going to reduce damage from nearby enemies by 16%, which is really nice. Then we're doing Call of the Pack just for some extra health, since we need to get over here to the Rending Maw. Then we're maxing out the Rending Maw, and Hunters of the Deep is going to help us keep the aspect of the shark on all the time. Keep in mind, this is another 10% melee attack speed that we're getting, so it's quite nice for us. And then we're getting Boar Heart, which is another 15% damage reduction that we're getting from our aspect of the boar. All of this should make for a very tanky bruiser build, but it should also be doing a massive amount of damage as long as all of this works as intended. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch a speculative video. I may not be a master of Last Epoch, but I do think this build's really gonna do well, especially after I sand down some of the rough edges. If you can think of any improvements for this build, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to look at those. Also, if you like my content, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in my next video.